Let the church say amen. amen. Um, I'd like to say God bless this house. Um, God bless Reverend Youngblood for giving me this opportunity. God bless the ancestors of Dr. King and Coretta Scott. And God bless Brooklyn. It's very good to be home. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in Wilson Mullet Shadow will stand today, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seen in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. So we have come here today to traumatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we have come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution in the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was the full heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on its promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check that has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vault of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cast this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of pulling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise out of the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality For the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment, this sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will be content will be in for a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America unless the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. But there's something I must say to my people who stand on the wall threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must continue to conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. 
Again and again we must rise to the majestic heights to meet physical force with soul force. The marvelous new religion tab which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to the mistrust of all white people. So many of our white brothers as evidenced by their presence here today have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. They have come to realize that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone. As we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their selfhood and robbed of their dignity with signs stating for whites only. We can never be satisfied as long as, as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied and will not be satisfied until justice rolls down. I am not unmindful that many of you come here today from great trials and tribulations. Some of you come fresh from narrow jail cells. Some of you come from, quest from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered with the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, go back to South Carolina, go back to Georgia, go back to Louisiana, go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities, knowing the situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in a valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. Amen. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. Yes. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit I have a dream that one day the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and equality. I have a dream that one day my four little children will be able to live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification,
you out of the mountain of despair the stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all God's children will be able to say with a new meaning, my country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the hiding Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped rockets of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California, but not only that. Yes. Let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Yes. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. Everybody say